What's going on guys, Sean Nalawani here, seannell.com, bodytransformationtruth.com. And the question today is, how much muscle can you gain naturally and in what time frame? Now this is actually a very difficult question to answer. Uh, simply because the numbers can vary so much from person to person depending on a lot of different factors. And so keep in mind that any answer that you get from anybody on this topic uh, is always just going to be a rough approximation. Uh, that said, having an overall ballpark figure in mind will at least give you some accurate expectations so that number one, uh, you don't get scammed out of your money by you know bullshit supplements or miracle programs or other products. Uh, that give you totally unrealistic ideas of how much muscle you can gain over a specific time frame. Uh, and number two, so that you can set practical, achievable goals and stay on track with your plan uh, rather than just program hopping from one plan to the next like so many people do uh, because you were convinced that your program isn't working and that you should be making faster gains. So how much muscle can you gain naturally? Again, ballpark figure but assuming you're on a properly structured program and you're following it consistently, uh, guys ranging from slightly below average genetics to slightly above average genetics are probably gonna be capable of building somewhere between, and I know this is a pretty wide range, but probably somewhere between about 20 to 40 pounds of actual lean muscle mass naturally. Now your body weight can obviously go up by more than that, uh, because you'll always gain some body fat while you're bulking and you'll be holding on to additional water weight uh, in the process. Uh, so it does depend on what kind of look you're going for. Uh, but in terms of actual lean muscle mass, that's a pretty safe range, I would say. So uh, if you have average genetics, then you'll probably land somewhere in the middle at about 30 pounds of muscle, uh, slightly below average, maybe around 20 pounds, slightly above average, uh, maybe around 40 pounds. And females can take those numbers and reduce them by about half. Uh, again, I know that's kind of a wide range, but like I said, uh, there's really no way to say exactly how much muscle any specific person is going to be capable of building, and around 30 pounds, give or take, will probably cover uh, the majority of the lifting population. And then in addition to that, you're also gonna have a small percentage of uh, genetic outliers who are gonna fall on the more extreme ends of the spectrum, uh, meaning that you'll have guys with particularly poor muscle building genetics uh, who might only be able to gain say 10 pounds of muscle or less regardless of what they do. Unfortunately, that is the case for some people, but again, it's only a very small percentage. And then on the far other side, you're going to have another very small percentage with exceptionally good muscle building genetics who might be able to gain uh, upwards of say 50 pounds of muscle. Uh, again, this is just an educated guess, but it at least gives you some sort of realistic idea to work with. Uh, I've seen a lot of other figures thrown around online uh, and in my opinion, a lot of them really overestimate what's realistic or at the very least, they overestimate what's realistic while staying at a decently lean body fat percentage. And 30 pounds of muscle is not a small amount by any means. If you took a guy uh, who was a complete beginner at, <clears throat> excuse me, 150 pounds uh, with an average build and then you put 30 pounds of pure muscle on his frame, plus a bit of extra fat and a bit of extra water, that's a lot of overall mass for someone to gain. Now, how long will it actually take to build that muscle? Again, just an approximation, but assuming everything is done on a properly structured program and you're consistent with it, you can probably expect to achieve about 50% of your noticeable genetic muscle building potential in the first year of training, and it will then slow down by about half for every year after that. Remember that muscle growth is not a linear process, and as you build more and more size, it's gonna become increasingly harder to make further increases. Uh, this is because muscle is metabolically very expensive tissue, uh, your body doesn't want to hold on to a high amount of excess muscle, and so it has certain genetic limits in place that prevent you from putting on too much. So the further and further you get away from your natural set point, the harder and harder uh, your body starts pressing on the brakes to slow that process down. Uh, but using that figure, you'd be at around 50% of your genetic potential after one year, uh, about 75% after two years, maybe 85 to 90% after three years, and then after four years and beyond, you'd be pretty close to your natural limit. You'd still be able to make continued gains from there. Uh, there are guys who have been training for a decade or more and are still able to make improvements to their physique, 
but the level of diminishing returns would be so steep at that point that you'd have to train hard for multiple years with your nutrition dialed in as well, uh, just to gain maybe a few extra pounds of actual new muscle. So uh, that's my answer, and I think it's pretty accurate for most people in most situations. As a natural trainee, a realistic expectation would be anywhere from about 20 to 40 pounds of total lean muscle mass, depending on your genetics, with about 30 pounds being the average. And you could build not all, but the vast majority of that muscle over a span of about four years. Uh, for some guys, it might be three years. For some guys, it might be five. But four years, give or take, is a pretty safe bet. Now, uh, what are the factors that are gonna influence exactly how much muscle you can build and how fast you can build it? Uh, there's a few main things. The first huge one to take into account is of course genetics. Uh, regardless of what anyone tells you, uh, genetics do play a very significant role in any given person's uh, rate of muscle growth as well as their ultimate muscle building potential, as well as what that muscle will actually look like from an aesthetic standpoint once it's built. Uh, in terms of actual muscle growth itself, we've got things like testosterone levels, uh, growth hormone levels, muscle fiber type, uh, insulin sensitivity, uh, myostatin levels. These are just a few factors of many. And then along with that, you have to take into account your height, uh, your joint size, your overall bone structure, your muscle shape, your muscle insertions. All of these things will affect how your physique actually looks once that muscle is gained. Uh, for example, 15 pounds of new muscle on a guy who is five foot five with a smaller bone structure, that's gonna appear much differently than those same 15 pounds uh, on a guy who's six foot four with a lanky frame. Uh, age also comes into play here as well uh, because guys who are in their late teens and 20s are naturally gonna build muscle at the fastest rate because their testosterone levels will be in the optimal muscle building range. Uh, whereas guys who are in their early teens or who are in the uh, 40 to 50 plus age range, they're gonna gain muscle at a slower rate because testosterone levels won't be as high. Uh, experience level also comes into play like I already touched on. Uh, the less experienced you are, the faster you'll make gains and vice versa. And also whether you're gaining that muscle for the first time or regaining muscle that you lost. Uh, and that's because regaining lost muscle, uh, that happens a lot faster than building brand new muscle. So if you took a layoff from training, your rate of growth would be faster. Or if you were someone who was uh, recovering from an illness like an eating disorder, the overall amount of muscle mass that you could gain uh, from where you started would be a lot higher. And then on top of all of this, uh, the assumption here is that you're natural because steroids will dramatically alter how much muscle you can gain. And the assumption is also that you're following a proper program and consistently sticking to it. Uh, because if your program or your consistency are uh, subpar, then all these figures obviously go straight out the window. Uh, in the end though, the whole question of how much muscle can you build, it honestly isn't something I'd spend too much time getting hung up on because you really have no way of knowing from the outset what your exact muscle building potential will be anyway or how that muscle is going to look on your frame once it's built. So as long as you just have a rough idea of what's possible in mind, then that's going to be good enough and it doesn't have much practical use for you beyond that point. So the best thing you can do is just get your training and nutrition dialed in, uh, be consistent, be patient, and focus on maximizing your individual rate of muscle growth, uh, and then see what your genetics have in store for you, and just make the most of your situation depending on your goals. That's really all there is to it. So I hope this was helpful, guys. If you want to get a complete step-by-step -step plan to help you maximize your genetic muscle building potential in the most efficient way possible, including fully structured workout plans, meal plans, supplement guides, and one-on-one -on -one coaching, then make sure to head over to bodytransformationtruth.com and grab my complete body transformation blueprint system. You can do that by clicking here at the top of the screen or by using the link in the description box below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, as always, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on future videos. You can also check out my official blog over at seannow.com uh, for all of my latest updates. And you can follow me on social media here if you aren't already. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you again soon.